Hi Facebook, this is Lorena with Synergy Behavior Solutions and um, had a last minute topic change because we've decided to push back our new dog now what webinar um, a little closer to the holidays. So I decided that I would just do a demo with um, my beautiful boy summer dog here. And um, if you're watching, please say hello in the comments. It's always nice to hear from people um, so I can say hi to you also. So uh, I have Summer today because he just got groomed and he looks gorgeous, as you can see. He wants to show off his delicious smell. And, um, and also because I think uh, we have to remember that dogs can learn at any point in their lives. And so Summer is about 10 years old. Um, we started doing, hi Diana. We started doing um, some more intentional training around uh, place or go to your bed or boundaries, whatever you want to call it, um, probably like four or five years ago in terms of starting to build in more distraction and duration and real life skills. Um, obviously when he was in puppy class, we kind of covered this back when, you know, he was little, but, um, but I don't currently have a dog in my house who doesn't already know this behavior. If I did, I would demo with them. I agree, Diana, he is gorgeous. Um, and, uh, but that's okay because it's going to be the same process to continue to build value for this behavior as your dog, um, continues to perform it. So one of the things that I think is a sort of like frustratingly common concept or attitude in dog training is this idea that once you're done training something, it's like over and you've written the code for it in your robot dog and now they just do it all the time. But that's not actually how learning happens. Learning is lifelong. And also we need to be always reinforcing and revisiting concepts. So that's something that, um, that I've talked about before in terms of like ditching the food bowl and just using your dog's daily food ration to reinforce behaviors you like, even after you've trained them up to a standard that you're happy with. So to maintain the value for those behaviors, and you know, as humans, we ask our dogs to do a lot of things that are not their default behaviors. So if you don't want your dog to do something that is normal for them to do, and you've decided to train them to do an alternative behavior in a particular context, you should continue to pay them and to reinforce those behaviors pretty much forever. There are times when you don't really have to do it nearly as often for sure, uh, but you can see how much Summer still loves to work for his kibble, and this guy is super stoked to train at any point. And so um, why not do that to continue to invest in our relationship and then also to continue getting these really nice behaviors where he's just able to chill on his bed when stuff happens around him. So um, I'm gonna show you just uh, some really basic foundation skills for starting to build value in your dog's bed and how you can also add a release cue. I find that a lot of my clients and students have taught their dog to go to their bed, but not to stay there. So it's the staying there that tends to be a challenge, especially when we wanna do things like more advanced training, like having our dog remain on their bed while we go and answer the door, for example. Um, so in order to do that, we need to make sure that we're building value for our foundation behavior of getting on the bed, and then we need to teach the dog when it is time to leave the bed. So, uh, if you're not familiar with the like three D's of training, I'll be talking a little bit about that in terms of how to add distance, duration, and distraction to these kinds of skills. But, um, but mostly I'm just gonna show you how I start at the very basic to build value for, um, for the bed. So I personally really like raised beds and they're a very clear demarcation in terms of what is the place and what isn't, what is a boundary and what's not. Um, but you can pretty much use any bed for this. Just remember that whatever you reinforce is what you're gonna see more of. So if your dog is only halfway on their bed and you feed them, then that is what you're going to continue to get. I like my dog to be entirely on the bed and I like to build value for the raised bed. They're also just like really durable and I can take them outside and stuff like that. So big fan of them. Um, I've got at least one in almost every room in my house. So um, the way that we're gonna do this is um, I'm going to start just by encouraging Summer to get on the bed and then rewarding him for making that choice. And like I said, obviously he already knows this behavior a little bit, but it never hurts to go back to basics. So when I shape this behavior, and by shaping, I mean I'm just gonna reward approximations to the final behavior, I like to set the animal up for success as much as possible. So I'm going to set him up for success by seating myself on the other side of the bed. And then when I do release him, I'm gonna toss the treat back so that um, when he comes back, it's really easy for him to get back on the bed. I might need to move the camera around, but we'll see what happens. Um, all right, so uh, ooh, I'm sitting on my skateboard and it's not working. There we go. So um, so the, the release cue that I use for summer is free. 
You can use whatever release cue you want. You can say, okay, go, hasta la victoria siempre, whatever you want. Um, Alina says, my dog scratches at his bed and I can't use it. Okay. Um, that's interesting. Uh, have you, I'm sure you've tried various different kinds of beds. Sometimes raised beds are really great for that. They do make raised beds that don't have, uh, that have like a more sturdy cover. That might be an option um, if your dog is still scratching. Although I would wonder if maybe that has something to do with um, struggling to settle. So I'd be, you know, maybe I did a video early summer on capturing calmness and how to build calmness. You might want to go back and watch that one if your dog struggles to settle. So, uh, so Summer's release cue is free. So since he's already on the bed, I'm going to release him first. And the way that we train a release cue is you're just going to say the cue, wait a second, and then toss a treat away. So um, over time, and I'll show you how this progression would look over time, uh, we would actually swap that to where we are releasing the dog to the, um, to the treat itself. So for right now, I'm just teaching him that uh, free means that a treat is about to happen. Ready? Free. Toss the treat away, he goes and gets it, and I'm going to stay on this side, see if he will come back, and he chooses, yes, to get back on the bed. He's got two paws on it, I'm going to reward that, and I'm also going to reward on the bed. So the bed itself is where all the value is, and notice how many treats I'm putting on the bed. Do not be stingy with the treats. Party happens on the bed. That's where all the good stuff is. Now I'm gonna wait, yes! He decided to put all of his paws on there, so now I'm gonna feed him. One, two, three, four, five treats. Party like probably fed the bed 10 times at this point. Let's see if he offers a nice down. Get comfortable, good boy. And then feed and feed. So I really like to wait for dogs to offer behaviors. A lot of people will tell me that their dog knows how, knows like that they should be on the bed, but then when I wait and see if the dog will offer and show that they have value in the bed, they often don't get on it themselves or they don't offer a calm behavior. So um, wait for your dog to offer a calm behavior, which for some dogs is just standing still at first. Summer likes to lie down. He's a little bit lazy these days. So it's pretty quick that he's gonna offer it down. He likes to just chill and let me deliver his meal. All right, so now I've done a ton of rewards. By the way, this is just summer's dinner and lunch. Like he's just earning his kibble right now. Um, so I've done a ton of rewards on the bed, building massive value for the bed. And then I'm gonna do one treat to release. Ready? Free. And he's like, mm, don't really wanna get off the bed. Free, go get it. <laughs> Um, and partly he doesn't want to get off the bed because he's an old man and he's got aches and pains, but also because he knows that this is actually where the value is. Can you get back on? What do you think? Yes, good boy. Feed and feed, and then I'm gonna wait and see if he gets all the way on the bed. <laughs> He's like, I don't really want to move my back legs. So Summer has some spinal arthritis and some pain in his hind end. So I'm going to attribute his hesitance to put his back feet on the bed to that right now. Um, you can see that he wants to, but he's like not feeling super great and that is totally fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and reward him anyway. Cause he's an old man. He knows how to get on the bed, but it's maybe not a super good feeling day. He's a little bit ouchy. Can you wanna get on? Here you go, you're okay. Good job. Relax. You can see this bed is actually a little bit small for him. He's a big boy. Um, but he has an orthopedic bed that is his preferred place, but it's kind of ugly, so I didn't want to use it for the live. Um, all right, so um, as you can see, uh, you would do a lot of repetitions of this, and I would say like three to five minute sessions. This is a lot longer than I would normally go, but I'm walking you through the steps. So um, the goal is for your first few sessions when your dog has no prior training with this, it is a high, it is a fast paced, exciting game. It's hop on the bed, feed, 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 free, toss treat, but dog comes back, feed, 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 feed. I really wanna see your dog yo-yoing back to the bed. And ideally your dog will learn and because you are be being very liberal with your delivering of treats on the bed, your dog will move faster coming back to the bed than they will to go get their release treat because they know that the bed is where the party actually is. So once you have a dog that is reliably yo-yoing back to the bed, then you can start to build a little bit of value for your release cue. And so um, I like to play with the food and mess around with it so he doesn't always know when it's gonna come. 
Um, so the way that I like to build some value for the release and to, uh, to teach impulse control with it is that I will take the treat and hold it out. And if my dog stays on the bed, then I will mark or just feed the bed. The eventual goal is that I'm going to place the treat onto the ground. And if he remains on the bed, he gets released to the treat. But you need to build value for the release cue using that stage one where we say the cue and toss it before you try this step. Most people try too quickly to get to the really sexy stuff when it comes to training, but we need to build value in the, in the foundation steps before we can get to the really cool stuff. So um, I would continue to move my hand farther and farther to the floor, and then maybe even put the treats on the floor and like play with them a little bit. And if he doesn't get them, obviously this is a more advanced level, if he doesn't move and he's nice and relaxed, then I will say, free. You wanna? Free. Go get him. It's like, oh man, gotta get up again. Ugh. <laughs> All right, hop it up. Um, and uh, the other thing that I just wanna throw out is like, people are like real excited to add a cue to stuff. They wanna start telling the dog what to do like right away. You do not need to add a cue anytime soon. And honestly, the bed itself should be the cue for a get on the bed. So if your dog is not reliably choosing to get on the bed, they're not ready for a cue anyway because you have not taught them the behavior. They do not have enough value in the bed if they're not just like, oh, I wanna be on that bed right now. You should not have to tell them to get on it. Um, if you are telling them to get on it, then you have moved too quickly. Um, and so one of the things that I do like about adding a cue is that for me, obviously, if Summer chooses to get on his bed and we're not training, he can leave whenever he wants. But if I ask him to hop it up, which is his cue for go to your spot, um, then, I, then I would like for him to stay there until he is released. So having said that, uh, once your dog is reliably offering um, a nice, like, some duration on the bed and you're just sort of drip feeding the bed, there you go, bud. Then you can start to add in some distraction. And the very first distraction, how much time do I have here? Just a few minutes. The very first distraction is actually going to be you moving around. Do not think about standing all the way up, especially if you have a high energy dog or you're working with a puppy. So Summer obviously is going to let me walk around the room and he will remain on his bed because we've built up to that level. But if, it, if this were his very first time starting to build in distraction, I would literally just like shift my weight like I'm going to stand up and then I'm going to feed. Shift and feed. Eventually working up to standing all the way up. And eventually being able to maybe even walk around the bed. And my criteria for my dogs is that as long as they stay on the bed, I don't care if they sit or stand, but I know that laying down is the most stationary behavior. So I always want to reward the bed to encourage the dog to just chill out and choose to remain. Notice how often I am feeding. High rate of reinforcement because the bed is where we are building a value. But for most dogs, if I do something like reach for the door handle, that is often a predictor or a trigger for rushing to the door. But if I continue to build a value in the bed, then I can have a dog who lets me open the door and possibly even at some point invite somebody in and he can remain on his bed. Ideally, when you release your dog, the first thing they want to do is come back to the bed. High rate of reinforcement. Good boy. So, um, a few things. Come here, bud. You want to lay down here? More comfortable? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I see a few questions. Let's see, Diana, Jimmy is very good at this. I do need to do more work with the release though. I forgot to put him on, I forget to put him on and he releases himself after a while. Um, you forget to, I for, oh, you forget you put him on, got it. Yeah, I do, um, I think, you know, like realistically, I think that's a really good point. I, 
realistically, I send my dog to their bed often, and then there are contextual cues that tell them it's time to release. And I think I do that in my daily life, especially um, when we're talking about, like, like my pit bull knows, like, Yoshi knows that she's supposed to be on her bed while I'm cooking. And I wouldn't say she's, like, 100% reliable with that, but she's pretty darn good at it. Um, however, I don't necessarily release her from that. She just kind of knows when I'm starting to clean up. And often, by the time I'm finished cooking, she's asleep on her bed anyway. Um, if I'm working with a release cue, I'm often doing a lot more intentional training um, to, to do something like, for example, Yoshi really struggles with hanging out on, um, on her bed while somebody comes into the house, like a visitor. Um, and I don't think I'm ever really going to get true calmness with visitors because she's worried about the situation as well. So she's on her bed, but she's like shaking and she's very excited. That's when I would use a release cue to make it really clear to her when she's allowed to, to approach the person. Um, and I send her right back to her bed after that. So it's like approach, two second greeting, back to your bed. So I, I think that the, the release cue, after you've established value for it, there are contextual releases that I think are totally fine, but it really is, depends on your criteria and what you find most effective. Um, I rarely use Summer's release cue. He's just a chill dude who like, I don't even really release him to say hello to visitors. I, he just like, he knows when, it, when it's time to go say hi, he says hi and then he lays down. But with dogs that need a little bit more structure, I think that the release cue is something you really want to invest in. Um, Brittany, my dogs get overexcited. Special needs pup is getting there, but I'm so not confident in this part of the issue. So I think that um, you want to prioritize with those kinds of dogs. And I think, like a lot of my clients that have dogs that are um, struggling with some like some specific behavior struggles, whether that's like human directed reactivity or like fear or whatever it might be, I, I might not have them present for those really challenging transitions, like when someone is actually coming into the house. Um, I often will have Yoshi like in her crate if it's not somebody that I think she needs to meet. Like there's no reason to go through that really stressful experience and like all of that increase in arousal um, unless it's necessary. So um, I think you, you want to prioritize when it comes to this kind of stuff. Although I do find that this training and combined with capturing calmness and building a calm settle on, um, on a bed is like absolutely foundational for working with any kind of behavior struggle. So definitely something to invest in. I also, depending on the um, the challenge of the dog's behaviors, like my like Yoshi, for example, for a long time, her bed, her raised bed was actually inside of an X pen up against a wall. So so when I knew that she was not going to remain on her bed, she was trapped in there and could not rehearse the behavior of rushing to the door or barking. Um, so don't be afraid to install management, like a tether, um, attaching like a hook to the wall and tethering your dog with a, um, a line and a harness, um, having a gate, like all of those is really great management that is still training. If your dog is not rushing to the door, then you are training them to not rush to the door. Just make sure that you're providing them with alternative behaviors that you build value for outside of the situation. So one of the things that I, that I do, and I still try to do it often, you know, whenever I think of it, is I will randomly knock on the door and then feed my dogs to desensitize them to door knocks. I also will randomly knock on other um, things like cupboards and walls, etc. Um, I also will send my dogs to their bed and then I will open the door and invite an imaginary person inside. So saying hello to imaginary people, you it will blow your mind. If you work really hard on place training and you've been like working, you can open the door now and you're like, oh man, this is so great. We've gotten so much great distractions. And then you open the door and you say, hi, how are you? And your dog will like fly and fling themselves <laughs> to the door. So there are predictors that indicate to our dogs like, the thing is actually happening. And I think we really need to be uh, observant in what are those cues and what are those environmental triggers for our dogs. Um, the really common one is saying hello uh, to like nobody on walks can be really helpful. I'm like, hi, how are you? And my dog's like, where? <laughs> so um, it can be really helpful to desensitize to those kinds of things. And um, I find that even for my really reactive dog, uh, if I do that often enough outside of the situation, then when I actually do have a visitor, she still kind of loses her mind, but not nearly as intensely, and she's able to recover a lot faster. Um, I see some questions. Hang on. Uh, Brittany says, what is your word for directing to the bed? You can literally use any. Some people say place. Some people say go to bed. I use hop it up. They also, he, he knows go to your bed. I think that just sort of happened. He, 
He said, I, I have a, a, a small part of me believe Summer actually understands human speech because the way that he just knows what people are saying, like, is, is wild. But, uh, but he, hop it up and go to your bed um, are helpful. I like to use cues that are not always bed-centric because I actually use place training everywhere. So, like, I, Yoshi has so much value for her place training that if we're out at the park and we're just like walking through the park, she will pull me to a picnic table so that she can station on the picnic table and be like, I'm doing it. Um, and then I can feed her for it. So um, she will find place settings and boundaries and beds just about anywhere. And that's exactly what I want. Um, I want a dog that is like, oh, this is a good spot to settle um, wherever they are, regardless of the novel environment. So I don't, I don't like go to your bed only because it's not, it sounds a little weird to say that at the park in front of a picnic table. So I say, hop it up. Um, Diana, he also gets very hot, so he gets off to go to a cooler spot. Yes, so does Summer. Um, I have to be, have to be careful with that with him because, um, he does get overheated. And so, you know, you could tell that he was able to settle in here, but it's not comfortable for him. And I think that's because of the pain that he's in and it's not cool enough. He likes to lay on hardwood or on tile. And you have to remember that, like, just because your dog's not on their place doesn't mean you're not training. So not, you're not training what you want. So as long as Summer is able to station and stay where he is, that's all I care about, and he does. So if, if he's right here in this position, laying on the ground, and I go and answer the door, he will stay here. And that's all, that's all I care about, and then I can release him. So it really, you, you need to think about what training fits your lifestyle and makes the most sense for you. Um, Brittany, exactly. I tell Fosters this all the time. There's no need to overwhelm. The settle is so hard for me, so this is encouraging. Yeah, there's... Um, I, I had a really great client this week who um, was talking about how his dog really struggles with when they have visitors over, and I was like, okay, I always kind of struggle myself with this particular thing because I think that people have unrealistic expectations sometimes for their dogs. And so I'm like, all right, let's start the process of desensitizing your dog to all these things. And he was like, oh, no, actually, I just decided that I would put him in his crate when people come over, and I, I pack a Kong, and then when the person is settled, I let him out, and he says hello, and then he goes on his bed and eats his Kong. And I was like you're amazing like that is exactly what you should be doing and why make it more challenging for everyone by forcing the dog to be in this transitional interaction that's hard for him when instead you can just put him away and then he can come out and say hi and then go go chill like it's perfect so um at synergy we have awesome clients uh and i appreciate the thoughtfulness and the attentiveness to like what is the easiest and most efficient way to get the behaviors that i want and not get the obnoxious behaviors i don't want and also keep my dog relaxed um, cool. All right. I have to go. I do actually have a client pretty soon. Um, so this is a nice chat. I would love to talk more about this in the future. Uh, we have a return because of those unrealistic expectations. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, it is, it is a thing. Uh, I've talked about it on here before and I think we need to be a little bit more vocal in terms of like the expectations people have of pet dogs these days is like pretty absurd. Uh, we need to be looking, they are animals and we need to treat them like that and understand that they're individuals as well. Like, you are definitely not perfect. So your expectation that your dog be perfect is not okay. Um, so anyway, I, mean, I think Summer is perfect. And also he has behavior issues like anybody else and just like me. So, um, all right, it was nice to talk to you all and uh, have fun training your dogs. Um, ditch the food bowl and keep it high energy, keep it short and you'll do great. Have a good day.